piecewise functions. It's exactly what you think it is. It's functions that are cut into pieces. Okay? This is an example of a piecewise function. You have one function represented by this top one, f of x equals x plus 2. And then you have another function, f of x equals 2x plus 1. They're not the same function. They're two different functions. You can actually have more than two. But, I mean, again, it's piecewise functions. So you're going to have two or more. Now, the way you distinguish between, you know, how you graph or how you evaluate which function is based off of the bounds that are here. So this x is less than 2 basically tells me that if I were to graph this or if I were to evaluate it, I only want the x values that are less than 2 for this first function. Okay? For all my x's that are 2 and greater than 2, I'm going to look at this function here. Okay? So when it says to evaluate the piecewise function at each given value, a is x equals 0. Well, 0 is that less than 2 or greater than or equal to 2? Less than 2. So when I evaluate it, I'm going to plug it into the first function because that fits the condition. Okay? The fact that x is less than 2 means that 0 is defined on this function and not this one. So all I have to do is plug it in. 0 plus 2 is what? 0 plus 2 is what? 2. There's your function. x equals 2. Is that my first function or my second function? Second, because x is equal to 2 on your second function. So when you evaluate it, you plug it into the second function. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. And the last one, x is equal to 4. Is that going to be plugged into my first function or my second function? Second, because 4 is greater than 2. So when I evaluate it, I plug it in to the second function. What's 2 times 4 plus 1? 9. Okay? So those boundaries, those conditions are important. They tell you which x values go with which function. Okay? Look at number 2. You have 3x plus 2. For all your x values that are less than or equal to 3, and then you have x minus 1 for all your x values that are greater than 3. x equals 0. Am I going to plug that into my first function or my second function? First, because 0 is less than 3. So when I evaluate it, what do you get? 2. x equals 3. Am I plugging that into my first function or my second? First. First, because the equals goes with this function here. What is it? And the last one, x equals 6. Is that my first function or my second function? Second. So 6 minus 1 is 5. Simple enough to evaluate. Okay? Graphing is a little bit different. You have to know what each one of these types of functions look like. And I mean, I don't know how many times I've covered with each type. I'm putting them on the board. So you should at least have some type of idea. Number three, what kind of a function is 1 half x plus 3 halves? Slope is associated with what types of functions? Hmm? Linear. Linear functions look like a what? Look like a line. So you're going to be graphing a line for the first function, and I'm only concerned about the x values that are less than 1 here. What about my second function? What is that? Negative x plus 3. What is that? What kind of function? Hmm? It's linear as well. You know it's not quadratic, it's not cubic, it's not quartic, it's not any other type of polynomial, because what's the degree here for this x? 1. If it was a quadratic, what would be here? A 2. If it was cubic, what would be here? If it was a square root, what would be in front of the x? A square root. If it was a rational function, where would the x be? The bottom. There'll be an x in the bottom, okay? This is a linear. These linear functions should know what each of those look like, okay? 
easiest way to graph it is to graph the whole line and then erase what you don't need. Okay, so hopefully everyone has a pencil. Yes? If you don't, I suggest that you switch. Okay? Old school graphing a line. The three halves is, is your what? The y intercept. So I cross the y axis at three halves. And the one half is my what? The slope. I go up one and to the right two. I go up one to the right two, up one to the right two, and I continue that all the way. What if I wanted to plot points on the other side of the line? Down one to the left two, down one to the left two, and I continue that all the way. Now, I'm only concerned about my x values that are less than one. Less than one. So I go to one, which is about right here. I want all the values that are less than one. Now, is one included with this function? No. So when I want to show that one is not included, I use an open circle. So there's going to be an open circle at one, and I want all the x values that are less than one. And there is the first function in my piecewise function. <coughs> so the trick is to graph the full line and only use what you need. Okay? And then you erase the other points. And then you erase the other points. Let's graph the second function. Negative x plus 3. Where do I start? Three. At 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then I go where? Down one over one. Down one over one. All the way. I can't go anymore. What if I want lines, uh, points to the left? Up one over one. Which way? Left. Up one, left one. Now with this function, I'm concerned about the values that are greater than or equal to 1. So I go to 1. There was the point at 1. Greater than or equal means I need a what? A what circle? Closed circle. And all the values that are greater than 1. And then I erase what I don't need. And there, we have successfully graphed our piecewise function. Yes, it may look like an absolute value, but they're two very different functions. All right? Questions? I thought that the closing circle was there. We're looking, because we're not even actually even including that point because technically the x value was zero. Here, we want all the x values that are one and greater. Let's look at the next one. The first equation. What's it going to look like? A line. Where do I start? Two thirds. And then I go how? Up two over three. Up two over three. Up two over three. What if I want values to the left? Down two, left three. Down two, left three. Which values am I concerned about? Greater than two. So I go to two. What do I need at two? Open or close? Open. And I want all the values that are greater than it. So I go up and I erase. Everything else. Okay, so that was perfect. You put it at where on the line to the x values to exactly. The second one, where do I start? And one. Then I'm gonna do what? Down one over one. Down one over one. What if I want points to the left of 
up on the Now I want all my values that are less than or equal to 2. So I go to 2 on my graph, which is right here at this point, and I need what kind of a circle? Closed circle, and all the values that are less than 2. So here are all my x values that are less than 2. They go this way. And I erase everything. And there is my piece watch function. So they don't have to touch. So they don't have to touch like they do in example 4, but they could touch like example 3. They still are comprised of piece watch function. Okay? Let's skip this one. So you guys can look at this. It says write an equation for each graph shown. Clearly, both of these represent p plus functions. So I need an S of x equals open curly bracket. Both of these are lines, aren't they? So they're going to be in the form of mx plus b, right? So if I look at this first equation, what is the y-intercept? What is it? Where does it intersect the y-axis? At 2. So I know my b is 2. What's my slope of this line? Careful. It goes this way. It's actually it's positive 1. Yes, normally you go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. But to get these points, you go down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. Good morning. Can I see here for just a second? Yes. And this function is defined for all of the x values less than, what's the x value here? Zero. Zero. So this was the line. It had a positive slope. Remember, positive slopes go up, negative slopes go down. So it was a positive one, and it intersects the y-axis at two. Now this one, where does it intersect the y-axis? And what's the slope? Positive 1. And it's defined for all the x values that are what? And there is the piecewise function for that graph. Okay? So again, if they're lines, you know you need a slope, and you know you need a y-intercept, okay? So you figure out where it crosses the y-axis, you figure out what the slope is, and then you put your restrictions on it. Your homework is practice on pieces.